Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and wherever you are, my friends. My name's Alex, and I'm here to teach you about Fog of War and marching cubes, or squares, in this case. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a blank GDevelop screen. Before I get into explaining to you exactly what marching squares are, I want to get it added to our um to our I want to get added to our project. So we're going to click on our project settings. We're going to go to extensions and we're going to search up marching and marching squares. So how this works is I'm going to take you on a little thought adventure here. Imagine a big sheet of graph paper divided into lots of little squares, right? And each corner of one of these little squares would have a number on it, like a little flag with a number written on them. So every corner, the top left, the top right, the bottom left, the bottom right. We pick a special number, let's say in this case, five. If a corner's number is five or higher, uh, five, six, seven, eight, go on its flag goes up. So it, it's, uh, the flag is raised. And a tiny explorer walks along these lines and it checks the flags. If a corner has its flag up, the explorer draws a short line inside of that square connecting to the other corner with a flag up. Sometimes it's a full square like an L shape and other times it's diagonal and straight down. So... The Explorer does this for every square, every line, every square. All these little lines connect to create a bigger, curvier outline across the whole paper, depending on the way it's the way that the numbers are. So these outlines show us boundaries between areas with different numbers. Think of a uh, a connect the dots by number art piece, you know, where you draw from line one to two to three, that's effectively what we're doing, but connecting to the same numbers. So by checking the flags, we turn the numbers into special shapes and the size of these squares we call cells. So that's kind of important. And I know there's a lot of information here, but I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by it. You don't really need to know all of the technical details to make this work in GDevelop. It's just a good idea to familiarize yourself with a concept so you understand what you're working with. So now that we've added the marching squares uh, extension, we need to create some objects and assign the extension behavior to those objects. Now we're going to be targeting an object that I haven't covered before on my channel, and that's the shape painter object. So you just click on add a new, a new object, scroll down to the shape painter. And this allows you to draw simple shapes on the screen using the events. So we're going to create some, some script that will allow us to, um, to draw a fog of war essentially. But, uh, because we added the marching squares event sheet, or because we've added the marching squares, uh, event behavior, we're going to be able to manipulate this without actually having to do any of that programming. So we're going to name this one field of vision. And we're going to turn off this clear the rendered image or sorry, <laughs> we're going to turn off the draw the shapes relative to the object's position on the screen because we're going to be manipulating this with math and we don't want it to draw wherever we put it on our game scene. And so you can see what we're doing. I'm going to change this to some sort of bright color, maybe a a purple or something. You don't have to do that. And we're going to fill in uh, the fill color as uh, 000 or black. I am going to set the opacity to 128, and this means halfway between visible and invisible, uh, as 255 would be solid, a solid color, like all the way black. And then as we lower the opacity, it kind of fades out. And so we're going to uh, set that in our event sheet as well, but I do want to set it here. I want to go ahead and add a behavior and we're going to add the marching squares painter behavior. So you can just type March up here if you want. Earlier in the video, I described what a cell was, and this is again, the lower the number, the more detail of our 
uh, our marching cube, the more detailed and the more angled, the more angles are going to be. Now, I want to enable fill outside. We're also going to target that in our event sheet just to ensure that this is always uh, this way. But in case you do forget to click this, I'll show you in a moment how to set it. And on the field of vision, I also want to add an effect. We're going to add a 2D effect and we're going to add a fast blur. Now, what this blur is going to do is blur the, the lines. And so that way it doesn't look so sharp and it feels a bit more um, organic in terms of like a fog shape. Fog isn't necessarily solid, right? It's kind of gaseous, uh, plumy, smoky. I don't know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so one thing that I do have uh, enabled that I forgot to mention is the grid. I do have the grid enabled and it is at the default 32 by 32. If you don't want the grid to be oversized from your canvas, because I'm running at a 720 width canvas, so 1280 by 720, I need to set this to 16 by 16. And you'll see here that it trims the grid so there's no overhang in any direction. It's not necessary, but I like to organize it that way. So we're going to add the field of vision to our project onto the canvas. And now that it's here, um, we can access its properties. It must be on our, our uh, layout for us to be able to interact with it in our event sheet. And it could actually be outside of the viewport. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to put it here for convenience sake. And before I start accessing it inside of the event sheet, I know that I need another shape painter. I'm going to need essentially two layers of grids to be working at the same time. So that way we can merge them on top of each other and see where we've traveled on uh, between how we paint on one layer and how it overlaps the other one, essentially. So uh, I know that's probably sounds a little confusing. Uh, it was confusing for me to understand when I first figured it out. But we're going to duplicate this object. And instead of calling it field of view or field of vision, rather, we're going to name this one uh, scouted vision. OK, so like I was mentioning, say we're, we were playing a uh, real time strategy game or something to that effect where a unit is traveling on the map. A scouted vision is where we're drawing a path, depending on where that that character moves and the field of vision is the entire map. So what we need to do is go into our scouted vision. And because it's a duplicate, we want to change a couple of things. We want to change the outline color to black inside of this one. You can just click down here if you want. Um, <clears throat> and we want to address the effects. And on this one, I want to blur the scouted vision a little bit more. So we're just going to pass five through all of these variables. And now if I was to press preview, you would see pretty much nothing except for the uh, base layer. Nothing is, is, is being presented yet. It hasn't been instructed on what to do, even though the shape painters are there. So I find uh, that it that it's very useful if we bring in a tiled sprite that we can use to um, accurately see what we're doing. So we're not just looking at the white background. So we're going to add a new object and you don't have to worry. We can go to the asset store and we're going to download a free asset. We're going to type. Let's try dirt. Let's see what happens if we type dirt. There we go. I'm going to take this dirt tiled sprite down here and add it to the game scene. So all I have to do is click on it, click add to game scene go ahead and click close. Now that you have the tiled sprite, go ahead and drag it in. It's going to get set automatically to a Z order uh, one higher than the last object you added to the game scene to set it down to be underneath the previous objects. We're just going to set it to zero and then we're going to stretch it to the entirety of our game scene. You can stretch it wider if you want. Oops. Stretch it out. 
as long as it covers where the camera was. The next thing that we need to do, start adding the events in that are necessary to trigger the shape painter to do what we want it to do. The first place that I like to begin in programming is some early organization. So by right clicking and going to a event group, we can add a nice little border here that gives us a place to label. And I like to name everything that, that starts at the beginning of the scene on start. So I know that on startup, essentially, it's going to be running. So I'll just do my brackets as old habits from previous coding. And I'm going to add a child underneath that. And now that I know that this is going to be at the beginning of the scene, I can add that condition at beginning of the scene. Let's go ahead and get that added in. There it is at beginning of the scene. Once we have that condition in for organization purposes, I'm going to add another condition underneath it as a child. What happens here because of the way that GDevelop reads is at the beginning of the scene is a trigger once event that happens when the game starts or when this scene is loaded. And if we reload the scene, this will happen again. So anytime a scene is deployed, this will be triggered, but it'll only be triggered once. So we don't need any conditions in here that say trigger once. But what I want to do now is even though we set some of the conditions for our field of vision, like here and here, filling the outside, we want to make sure that that always happens. And in case you accidentally change something inside of the editor, and you still want the program to run at the value that you've specified before, we need to set a few actions first. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the field of vision. So we start here, and then we need to click fill outside the, of the contour. So we need to look for um, fill outside, and we're gonna say yes, yes, fill outside. It's just like clicking the button inside of the editor, but Instead, we're doing it inside of the code. So we're gonna copy and paste that. And we're gonna change this one into scouted vision. We want that to happen for both of them. And then just like we did uh, earlier is in the, in the untitled scene, we changed the uh, opacity of the field of vision and the scouted vision, we actually want at 255. And even though I set it there, we wanna come in here and set it, set them both again. So what I'm going to do is click field of vision, we're going to type opacity, looking for the fill opacity. We're going to set the inside opacity to 128. And the scouted to 255. Now that we have a trigger once event that will at, at start, actually, I can just run it now to show you. Nothing happens because all we've done is now tell it what we want it to do in terms of what color do we want these contours? Where do we want the filling of the contours? But now we need to actually set the field or set the grid, if that makes sense. We need to draw them into position. So that requires two steps. We're going to add a new event group and make sure that it's underneath it, but not as a child. It needs to stay directly like this. And we're gonna say drawing the fog of war. We're going to add a child. You can do that by doing shift D if you didn't know that. We're gonna start our program by clearing the field. Every frame, we're gonna clear the field because as our field of vision changes, as we move around through the scouted vision, we need to clear it to make sure that these two that are overlapping are displaying the right reveal effectively. So what we're going to do is add the action. We're gonna to go to field of vision. We're gonna type clear. And we're gonna start by clearing the field, making sure that if there is something left over, we can get rid of it. We're gonna add another uh, condition. And one way you can do that actually is click uh, or hold shift and press A. 
and A will add it underneath it, but not as a child. D is for, uh, I always remember it, uh, I, have a, I have a daughter, so mine's shift, shift D for daughter, and then shift A for adult, uh, parent and child. That's just the way I remember it. Um, and I would now want to draw the contours of the field of vision of the mar of the uh, marching squares for that that shape painter. Effectively, we're going to be drawing the grid. So we need to do that for each of them by going in and just typing in draw the contours. You type draw or click on it down here in field evaluation. We're going to draw the contours. Hit OK. Copy and paste that. Control C, Control V. Click on it and change it to scouted vision. So now we have it for both of them. What I want to do is merge them over top of each other because one of them is light, one of them is dark, depending on the filling. And we're going to layer them over top of each other and basically poke a hole through it. Uh, so that we can see. And so we need to merge them. And we want to merge the scouted vision into the field of vision. So we're going to add an object, click on or add, add action, click on scouted vision. And we want to merge it with a field. And the field object is field vision. And we're going to set the operation to maximum, maximum whole pokage. And we want to do that first. And then we're going to draw both of them. Now, for us to, if I press preview, this is the first time you're going to see anything different than all the other times we previewed. As we can see, literally nothing. Because there's no way yet for us to fit, like draw on the field of view. So what we need to do is add a way for us to see through this black layer that we've drawn. We filled it in. So we can add in between these two, shift A, to add another condition. And we're going to add something called a disk to the field. And the disk essentially is like, in this case, the way we're using it, uh, uh, think of it as swimming goggles. And you have the air above water, and then you have the water layer. And if you put your face into the water using goggles, you can peer through the layer. And we're adding a disk to do that, a circle. And we're going to position it at the cursor's X and cursor's Y location. We're going to give it a, a radius of, uh, oops, I accidentally clicked on something else there. I was trying to move my mouse and clicked on that. So if you ever do that, just go back to add a disk. Uh, type a radius of 32. We're going to do a capping ratio at the, the value around 8. And the operation needs to be maximum. The, the options are addition, subtraction. But in this case, we want to go all the way. And so if I press preview, now when I move my mouse, you should be able to see that it's now drawing the two layers and it's using that disk at a cell size of 20, which allows us to have these really interesting, you know, circular geometric shapes, but they're, they're drawing on the edges of, of the circle into um, <clears throat> using that flag technique that we were talking about in all these little cells. And another way that you can visually see this kind of expanded a little bit and exaggerated is if we go to our field of vision, go to the behavior and change the cell size to, let's say, um, 64 by 64. Now the bigger, the less detailed. And that's kind of the, the, the thing here. We want to deal with the equal to both of them or they won't line up correctly. They, sorry, both those values need to be the same on each of them. But now, as you see, as I, as I move around my mouse, we can see these grids being drawn on a much larger scale, but the, the detail of my moving mouse and as it marches through these squares, my little explorer here, the grid is really chunky. And so it only allows for really basic shapes like L patterns, which allows us to get that, di that diamond shape. Well, that's all I have for you. So. Hopefully that introduction to marching squares and fog of war you found useful. Until next time, remember, happy game making, and I'll see you in the next video.